Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume this complete beginner's guide to Underrail here in 2022. So, a lot, lot to talk about here as we start this episode. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. In the first episode, it was very long, but I had a lot to go through before I wanted to kind of wrap that up. And now I'm ready to continue, uh, and I want to talk upper left looking at my portrait you'll notice um, I'm not at full health and I'm my reserves are low but in the beginning of the game when your consumables your boosters your desaturated psionic inhalants um, your bandages are a little bit low health hypos um, you don't want to waste resources to top these off unless you absolutely have to because they're expensive and they're few and far between like i said before desaturated psionic inhalants if you're a psionicist these things at the beginning of your lifeblood they really determine how far you can go uh, because once you're out of side points with this kind of a build you are not killing things otherwise like you don't have a backup and that kind of leads into another aspect of this I want to talk about so I'm going to bring up my character panel uh, no I'm let me bring up my skills all right so when I made the character um, I put the points into abilities in this fashion leaning on will and intelligence now if you look at um, intelligence okay it is important for characters that focus on science and all disciplines are dependent on it. And I was leaning on these for being a psionicist, but my good buddy Rob in the comments of the first episode did point out a very helpful reminder, similar to the fact when I said, if you look at your feats and you click show all feats, you can kind of see what the future is and where you want your abilities and your skills to be so that you can unlock certain feats. Um, all of this amazing system for character creation synergizes. So, remember when we were putting points in the psionics here, and you saw that there were synergies from, um, psychokinesis, metathermics, and temporal manipulation, but above that it says related base ability. And what that means is, you are gaining a benefit from will, okay? So, like, having a high will confers benefit to these abilities but it also works with persuasion intimidation okay and so every single skill that you might want to use if you want to be optimal and lean into the strengths that you've directed with your abilities when you're checking out your skill also look at the related base ability to see you know help make a decision on whether or not you want to invest points there. So that's how you kind of lean on your strengths and optimize your build a little bit more with synergies is to say, okay, well, um, I have a high intelligence. Intelligence gives me better hacking. And as Rob was pointing out, lockpicking is actually dependent on dexterity. So what does that mean? Okay, so what that means is if I wanted to optimize the character that I'm going with, I would have chosen hacking instead of in um, lockpicking because I have high intelligence but not the best dexterity. Now, that's optimizing and that is very helpful and you can choose your skills and your path based on that philosophy and the game does that well. But the other thing that the game does well is allow you to be totally classless in the sense that you can make whatever character you want to make. And I personally just like lockpicking better than I like hacking. I always, you know, it was my choice. And I wanted to put points in that. And even though I don't have a great dexterity, you can still go lockpicking and you're not losing out on anything. You're just not doing it as efficiently as if you went hacking, for example. So. The game lets you make the choices that you want to make, and you don't have to take the optimal path. You can do whatever you want. As an example, I went lockpicking with my character uh, on my Let's Play, and at the end of the game, I was 
in throughout the game i was always opening every locked container because i dumped full points into this it was never an issue now if you went more optimal you could have points to spread around instead but just telling you that letting you know another thing is um like i just don't i'm not personally the kind uh, of player who wants to do conversational skills social skills i wanted to do more like psionics and then utility for exploration and that was the kind of path that i took but of course you can do whatever you want and the final bit too you can do whatever you want and it's classless is remember how i was just talking about the desaturated psionic inhalants and how they're expensive and with this kind of a build pure psionics it's going to linchpin around you having regeneration for your side points if instead you wanted to like make a psionicist but who was also good with guns you could easily do that and then you could use like more hybrid like a little bit of psionics a little bit of shooting and the game lets you do that so that's why the game is so fantastic so a little bit i just want wanted to kind of develop uh the excellent point that rob had made and i'd really love to see that like all of you zoners you pipe workers any kind of contributions to this guide to help new people out for things that um, I've missed or overlooked or just didn't explain right is so useful um, and in the spirit of helping new players it's just fantastic so I got these um, I'm by the way I'm sorted by consumables because I wanted to talk about these but remember you can always just sort by different item types to make your inventory a little easier and you might say well it's not a big deal um, it later in the game it becomes a big deal now you have unlimited squares uh, on your inventory so you could scroll this down forever you never need to play tetris mercifully but you always have to manage your weight our weight is kind of up there right now because i've got these rat hound leather now i'm going to talk to quentin and i want to do his first option do you have anything to trade and i'm going to click on it now i, I want to just make this very very small caveat okay when you're doing dialogue options like in most games you'll see that there is a number that corresponds to it and that you can push that or click on it with your mouse. I'm going to tell you that for the most part that works, but I've had instances in my play where I clicked on a number and it did not match up correctly to the dialogue sequence. And I don't know if that's an artifact of um, they reordered the dialogue when they were translating or it's just something wrong with that particular interaction and the coding or whatever. But if, especially if you're in like a situation where you, you haven't saved it and you want to be sure you say the right thing, just click on it to like not have an altercation but most of the time it works i just want to give you a heads up that i've had some things where i pushed a number and they i said something else um so anyway the first option is trade so i'm going to click on it and he's like all right of course now um my man here quentin he will buy um animal parts right and so you can see the things that he will buy are have this kind of amber color this light brownish transparency of over the item in the background so he'll buy three leather five organs three bolts three medicines and three chemicals okay so and of course he'll always take credits so if i sell these to him i'm just going to kind of double click on these or you can shift click them i believe or no control click or alt click that's what it is boy every game does that differently alt click everybody <laughs> Um, alt click transfers it and now I've got this which is an organ this these are leathers and I could say auto and he's going to give me 37 credits for these and again it's based on my merchantile and um, some other factors perhaps your your reputation with with this uh, settlement or whatever but um, maybe your your stats affect that but I never boost merchantile, so I just have to take what they give me. I'm not really negotiating, and he's going to give me 37 credits for this. And if I say trade, he'll give me the money, and then you'll see that this um, dynamically refreshes to say now he'll only take one leather, four organs, and three bolts. In this game, you just sell people what they will buy. And this person has a limited amount of things that they buy, but they are might be one of the only people that buy... Um, you know, leathers and organs here. Uh, they aren't, but, you know, just pay attention. And something that you can do if you want um, to help yourself save time is to push escape after that and then go to the map. And then, you know, you're on this floor here, which is 
agronomy and pens. And then you can just shift left click and put a note and you could say Quinton. Um, and then you can also just say, you know, like he buys um, leather, you know, organs, um, medicine, uh, and whatever else uh, that, that he purchases from you, right? Uh, I'm not, not remembering offhand everything, but this is good enough to just get a sense of, like, you can put this note down to remember where the merchant is and what they buy and sell. And this is very helpful because people have a limited amount of things that they want to buy, like we've seen, and they're located all over the place, and the game doesn't tell you it otherwise. So this way, you know... It does tell you that there's a merchant. So you see where it says in green, encountered in the bottom right on the map, merchant. It does tell you there's a merchant there, but it doesn't tell you who and what they buy. So I like to just know that. Also, just knowing Quentin, like potentially in the future, you might have a quest or you might want to talk to Quentin about something. Now you know exactly where this person is. These are the kinds of notes that are very helpful to leave for yourself in this game because it doesn't do it. Now, if you like me and you watch my Let's Play, I just wander around aimlessly looking for people and praying. And, you know, I do that a lot. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. What else did you want to buy? Um, oh, special bolts and chemicals. Okay, so I'm going to actually just continue to add to this. So you can just shift left click and you can even adjust um, a note that you've left. Okay, and then there you go. Now we're good. Now I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to speed it up, plus, 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 till I'm going faster. And I'm going to go through this doorway down here. And this is our good buddy, Big Bread. Now, Big Bread um, is uh, the kind of, like, animal handler dude. And uh, you can talk to him, and then you can trade. And he will buy plants and fungi from you. So here's your plants and fungi, man. But also... Um, if you want to trap, this is your dude for buying throwing nets and bear traps and hopper traps and the like. He also sells trank bolts, okay, which will come in handy. And um, he sells you the blueprints, okay? So keep an eye on who sells what blueprint. They're super expensive early in the game. But um, if you want to craft your own throwing nets, for example, instead of buying them from him, you can totally do that. And it might be worth your while. So I'm going to just say um, map, left click, and I'm going to put down, you know, Big Brett buys plants and fungi. And you can even, like, if you want, list the quantity to save yourself time. Just depends on how crazy you want to get with your notes. Um, it's up to you, of course. All right. So... Um, this is the cool hydroponic area where they're growing food uh, for people who live here, growing herbs for medicine and the like. All right, now let's take, take a look at our notes. We need to talk to Harold on the engineering level about a few things. So we're going to continue to do that. So we're going to find engineering on level 7. Now we already went here to talk to Ezra. But by the way, while we're here with Ezra... Um, I want to show you Ezra, and we already looked at his collection briefly, but he sells, okay, blueprints for side headbands, which you might want, but we're not great at crafting it, and he also sells the components that you would want to craft some electronic stuff, but they're super expensive. Usually you want to kind of find these things in the field, and just throwing it out there early, if you do want to craft, and you want to make something good, you want to have high quality components. And because those govern how powerful the item will be, the quality does. So you can see on this metathermic modulator, for example, it has a quality of 53. Now, the downside of that potentially is that the higher the quality, the higher the skill it will take you to use it. So you need, if you want to craft a really high quality item and use high quality components, you have to have a lot of skill points invested to do that. Okay, so just, you know, a kind of heads up about that. Now, it won't tell you um, necessarily specifically what this will do if you use a metathermic modulator when crafting a psionic headband, um, for example. But when you are in the crafting menu and you put everything together, 
it will show you the outcome of the item before you commit to craft it. So you can kind of tweak and add and remove parts to try to get yourself a nicer item, okay? At least for the headbands. And does he sell? He sells grenade um, crafting modules if you're interested. I myself didn't craft many grenades. Um, I generally just used the ones that I found around um, or bought them if I was really desperate. But money is something that's kind of tight early game. So what you can do is, oops, let me go back to him, and he's going to buy parts, side components, components for headgear, goggles, blueprints, and he'll always buy batteries. So again, you can just go map. We're on engineering, and you can just make a note like Ezra is here, and he will buy, um, buys, uh, Psy crafting stuff, batteries, um, and... Um, electric, uh, wait, here we go, grenade, crafting stuff, I believe, now I'm not being very specific with that, because there's lots of different things that he is buying, um, actually, no, he sells grenades, and but he doesn't buy, um, grenade stuff, that's gonna be Harold, most likely, um, or actually, um, at the firing range, but he does buy electric parts, so, um, him and Harold will buy electric stuff, so you can just be like, electric components or parts, however you want to phrase that, and now you have that down. Okay, and I'm going to go over here. And here's our buddy Harold, sitting in engineering, and we can talk to him, and he says, this is my workshop, and I'm gonna be like, what's up, dude? Um, and let's look at first what he has to trade. And so he'll buy repair kits, metal components, molds, cloth, padding, pneumatic components, um, and armor parts. So he will buy all kinds of good crafting stuff, all right? Um, but not electric components, so... Uh, that's for Ezra, but everything, all of that is on this floor, and luckily the cool thing about SGS is like you see that it's just labeled very nicely what everything is, so you can just find your way around pretty easily, but he does sell um, recycle item is useful, uh, repair kits are good, alright, and so that's kind of nice, alright, now let's go ahead and do our quest with him, Tanner tells me you know a way to restore the power and he's like, yeah, I do. Um, and he says, it's a flux controller. It's the flux capacitor from Doc Brown. And we just need to insert it into the generator. And it, quote, should get it running again. And we say thanks. Um, and now you can look at this. And your quest log has been reactivated uh, or changed. And it says reactivate the power generator and retake the outpost. So now we have this item. I'm going to go to push inventory. I'm going to go to plot, and you'll see that we have the flux controller right here. Um, I do want to talk to Harold about... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't this say... Talk to... Oh. <laughs> I kept saying we had two quests for Harold because I was reading too quickly. It's They, they start with H-A-R, but it's Harland, not Harold, okay? So we need to talk to Harland, not Harold. I am going to leave a note. I'm a kind of scatterbrained person, and so games like this can be very difficult for me, which is why I have to leave notes, because I'm just going to get lost and confused. Um, I still love these games, but sometimes uh, I'm not great with names, and so, you know, I'll confuse, like, Harold and Harland and conflate them uh, horribly at, at the expense of everyone's sanity. All right, um, so, look, I even did it right here. Um, Harold, oh my god. Alright, so, let's get it right. Come on, focus. Buys, um... Crafting... Items... Padding... Etc. So now I know if I have crafting stuff that I want to sell, I will come here. And by the way, just as a heads up, 
crafting items that you find uh, can sell for a ton. They're usually like premier loot because they don't weigh a lot and they can sell for a lot. But of course, in Underrail, baby, you're limited by how much people actually have money-wise. So a lot of the time you're going to have to trade them. But here's a pro tip. Whenever you see a merchant that will always buy something, as in how Ezra always buys batteries, or um, most arms dealers will always buy ammunition of any kind, then you know that if you want a f different form of currency, even though it has weight to it, okay, unlike money, you can just buy batteries and and buy um, bullets, like trade for them if, you, if they don't have enough credits, and then just keep just go and liquidate the batteries and the bullets to a vendor when you can if they have money and then wait for them to replenish their money. Now, actually, um, let's go to our quarters really fast. All right, so um, I'm going to go into my bedroom right, really fast. I'm going to explain two things all at once, two harsh lessons about Underrail. Number one, you cannot interact with your bed. So I think I may have misspoke uh, in the previous episode and said you could restore your health with bandages and sleeping. No, it's just bandages, and I'll show you. It's not sleeping, it's uh, talking to the doctor. I'll show you that in a moment. You cannot rest in your bed to either pass time, right, if you're, like, waiting for people to restock items or replenish, and you can't rest to restore your health, and there is no regeneration from health naturally. You have to use items to do that, okay? And that's part of the punishing nature of the game itself. So, I'm going to go to medical really fast. What's in here? It's locked. Okay. And let's go ahead and talk to Pascal. And I want to um, say, can you take a look at my injuries? And he's like, I'll have it fixed. And boom, 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 the screen blacks out. And Pascal patches you up for free. Okay, so as long as you're close to the station, you could talk to Pascal. He will restore your health. By the way, we have the same picture as Pascal, which is just hilarious. He must He's looking in a mirror. The kind of, like, absolutely exhausted doctor. That's who we are. So, um, this is how you can get healed. Now, you cannot, however, do this for psionics. This is why psionics can be expensive, and you can barter with him. He'll buy medicine, chemicals, and components, and this is where you can come buy bandages, okay? Now, bandages, right? If I wanted to buy 20 bandages, how much would that cost? I don't even have enough money, okay? So, this gives you a clue for, oh my god, that's expensive. Now, he does sell you the recipe for Psy Inhalant, Psy Booster, and Health Hypo, okay? So, these are all tremendous, right? And so we want these at some point. Um, like, so if we wanted to buy, you know, Psy Booster, it's going to cost us 60. And if we wanted to buy Inhalant, it's going to cost us 120. Now, how much do we have? We have, um, after b purchasing this, we'd have 67, which would not be very much, right? So we have to make a decision on whether or not we actually want to spend money on this prospect at this time. I'm not going to until it's too late, uh, until I have to, basically, but just understand that. Let me show you how expensive. If I want to buy just one of these babies, all right, shift click to split the stack, it's going to cost me a hundred to buy just one inhalant, okay? So that's a pretty steep cost and you'll find out why in a moment it it costs so much um, but that's just what you have to deal with as a psionicist as an exchange for using mind powers all right so now um, let's go ahead and go to the shooting range oh actually while I'm doing this let's push M let me find um, Doo -doo -doo -doo. medical and we're just going to say um, Pascal um, buys medicine and uh, components uh, for 
medicine crafting. All right, so close that up, close that up, and let's go around here. And here's Lucas, and we're going to say, Lucas, what would you buy? Now remember, he this is what... He's going to buy all guns and stuff and armor, um, but he will always buy bullets and regular bolts, okay? So he will always buy these. You can, in fact, sell back your gun and your bullets, and I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to show you how much money you can get for doing that anyway. All right, 224. He has 176. And I'm even going to sell my bolts and my... Um, crossbow and we'll make 390 we'll make almost all of his money doing that okay now you might say that's crazy but I'm telling you what I'm never going to use those things uh, at, the way I'm going to play this character is if I run out I run away now I could buy grenades okay if I want but I'm not going to I'm just going to say thank you very much now let's look at his blueprints he's selling grenade case Tactical vest. Okay. Okay. I really don't want any of his blueprints, but the blueprints are a revolving stock item, so just pay attention, and maybe you can find one that catches your eye depending on your build. Crafting your own bullets, by the way, if you're a gunner, uh, is going to be a huge part of your playing, and crafting your weapons is, is also going to be usually a huge part, unless you don't want to go crafting at all. Now, I could spend some of my money and, like, buy a hat and buy a belt and stuff like that. Um, and we can look at what armor he has, right? So I'll click over here just for equipable items. And he's not selling you a belt. He will sell you cave hopper boots, okay? And um, they're quite expensive, uh, but they give you a boost to your stealth and agility. And, in fact, you'll notice this just boosts your overall agility by one, wearing... Um, cave hopper boots, okay? So, that's pretty cool. Uh, and... Boosting your stealth by three is also, um, more important for us. Do I want a balakalava? This is good if you want to stealth even more. Um, and it gives you a little cold resistance, right? So, this is nice for sneaking around, just wearing that cool ski mask, if you wish. I'm actually going to buy one. It's not too expensive. And it, it might help us get the drop on some foes. And we got a ski mask on. Cool. And um, you could talk to Gorski. Um, and do target practice, of course. But we don't really care about that right now. We're going to look at this. And we're going to just say Lucas. And Lucas will buy um, guns, ammo armor, all that stuff. Sweet. Okay. Um, now, this quest log tells you, by the way, that Harland is going to the SGS metro station, then entering the underpassages, okay? So, he might be doop -doop -doop -doop, near our good buddy. Let's go down, 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 Bisson. And let's check it out. All right, so here's Essie, and you can talk to you. Um, hey, you remember me? Yeah, of course I remember you. How's it going? It's going good. Um, and she could give you directions, and she's like, hey, where are you going? And you're like, actually, I'm not going anywhere. And they're like, oh, okay. Uh, there's the sentry. All right, so... If you want to find our buddy, we can go to the underpassages, okay? And these underpassages are uh, sort of safer. And you can look in here and see if there is anything, but there really isn't, unfortunately. And let's just go here and open this. Nothing. Okay, and here's our buddy Harland way over here, and we could talk to him and be like, hey, what's up? 
um, hey, I'm incompetent. And he's like, you hear about my turret? And I'm going to say, Lucas sent me here to talk to you about that. That, he's not taking this seriously at all. Look, I got a situation. Someone took down one of my cameras right outside. They want me to go blind, all right? Um, and so you're like, I'm not going to go here. And says, so you can attack and break through the gates. And have you seen those? They're not big, thick split gates Malcolm's got at his checkpoint. No, no, no. I've got a pair of oversized trays between me and the lurker hordes. All I want is some extra ammo for my turret, and one more turret, it's dangerous out there. What if it's not the lurker hordes, but... but what? Um... The camera just fell off the wall. Have you even been outside? Are you derailed? I'm not going out there. Then I'll go. You will? Of course. This is as much my station as yours. That's good to hear, alright? And then, so, um, I'm on the job, alright? So he wants you to go out and check on his camera, okay? So you save the game, immediately, so you don't die. And let's just look around, and I'm telling you what, take everything you can. If it's a, if it's the hand is, like, letting you take it, take it. Search everything, take everything. You never know where an oddity will be, and that will give us experience, which is invaluable. Alright, well, nothing there, unfortunately. Alright, so we need to investigate the underpassage to figure out what's going on with this dude's cameras. Well, fine. How do we do that? We have to look around. Let's check this barrel. We found some casings. Vital casings. Let's see what we can get over here. Anything? There's an emergency phone. That's kind of funny. And it doesn't really do anything. You can make a call, open the compartment, take the items. And um, we found ourselves a black cloth, electronic scraps, and metal scraps. All right, so we can sell all that and have fun. Okay. So I'm just exploring, by the way, and looting whatever the game will let me loot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my God, I missed this barrel. Yeah, some more really not very valuable stuff. Got that right. All right. So let's go up here. And let's go here. We're already professional on this area here. So what I'm going to do is go stealth. Push 9 to go into stealth mode and go up here. And there is an underpassage entrance, I believe, right up here. Yeah, there is. Yep, let's go down. And you want to take this real easy. All right, so here we are underneath. And if I push M to go to map, you're not going to see anything. There's nothing highlighted because I actually have to go to the upper left and change this down to the lower passages. And here I am in the lower passages, right? And the map is not really super useful at this point. You just need to kind of pay attention to your surroundings and keep an eye out for trouble. Now, this is locked with lockpicking 15, which we could open, but we have no lockpicks. And I want to say something, too, just while I'm thinking about lockpicking and all that jazz. You don't actually need lockpicking or hacking it to beat the game. It's just something that I like to have one of, but you could put your points elsewhere if you wanted to. Really, the only thing you have to do in this game is you have to be able to fight in some capacity. I don't believe this is a game that you can just walk through um, as a pacifist, that eventually there are situations you're going to get thrown into where you have to fight. Okay, so um, here we are, and look, we can see that this is where Harland is right here. Here's the gate that he would not open. And right over here, there's like a camera that's been knocked off. It's um, like this camera is here. Uh, and he can see us, but this camera has been busted and we can investigate it and it says it's been removed from its mount and violently Judging by the broken bits on the floor So what you want to do is investigate the area You can hold tab to see if there's anything to interact with But you usually just want to kind of go around investigating and do it locally and carefully Because this isn't a game where you're going to be changing zones a lot when you want to explore You usually need to keep into a pretty tight area because if you go off the rails if you venture into like uncharted territory it gets really really hard now there's like a dead rat hound up here is that part of the 
Oh my god. Look at this guy. This guy just appeared. Okay, so... This is why stealth is super useful. So I was walking, and we walked right by this guy, and his stealth bar turned yellow, his eyeball, he started filling up, and he was about to see us. So I immediately jammed the enter button to go into combat mode, so we can get the drop on this guy. So what do we want to do? The first thing I want to do is use telekinetic punch on this dude um, to stun him and to see how much damage we can do to him, all right? So we didn't actually do a ton, but we started to do some damage. And we're going to go ahead and blast him with uh, cryokinesis right here. I'm going to push four, and I'm going to hit him. And now, okay, look what happened. Um, we hit him for cold, 16 cold damage and 9 mechanical damage for 25 damage total. He has um, 80 health. And now look at his, he's stunned for one turn, and he's chilled for two turns, which is, means his movement points are reduced. So I'm going to run back this way. I'm not going to run out this way into the hallway, because I don't know what's over there. So I'm going to kind of keep it cool, and I'm going to just um, pass the turn. Now he has his second wind, which means we can't stun him anymore. But what we can do is blast him. So I'm going to hit him um, like that. And I'm going to then um, run away. Now, he's going to be able to reach us, but hopefully he can't kill us, okay? He couldn't. So because we slowed him so much, so much, he couldn't even attack us, and we're just going to hit him again. Now, we have a choice. We could do Neural Overload, okay, which will do 13 to 18 electrical damage. And maybe some damage if his intelligence is above 5, which I doubt. Or we could just do cryokinesis again, which will do more damage. And usually cryokinesis is your baby. And we're just going to hit him, and this guy's dead. And I'm going to push enter to end combat, and I'm immediately going to push 9 to go back into stealth, just in case something else happens. I'm going to investigate this guy. Now he has a, a shock steel combat knife, a lockpick, and a shotgun shell. Now these are great items. Like This is a cool weapon that sells for a lot, so we're going to take it and use it. You'll notice that my psionics are just about out. So this is a important point to be aware of, that we are bleeding psionic points, and I'm going to push F5 to save the game. So we're going to need to use an inhalant soon, but I'm very greedy, and I wait until the last moment to use it. All right, so I'm kind of looking around. There's a dead rat hound here. We found that stalker, you know, um... And it says, someone's taken down his camera, and he thinks it's in preparation of an attack on his guard post. Investigate what's going on. So let's keep looking around. We do have a lockpick now, um, if we really want to use it. But don't use it just yet. You you know, like right here, you can get back around here. So don't waste your lockpick on something like that. Just see if you can move around. And you can. Okay, good. And let's just keep looking. I'm going to save it again. Just kind of waltz around. See what's happening. Are there more bad guys? There's stairs that go up. Oh my god. Another stalker. So these guys are real sneaky, and here's this dude. Alright, so I got I'm got the drop on him. By the way, you can throw flares if you want to, like, reveal people or light them up. If you're curious... Uh, but now we can just telepunch this guy, do the exact same thing. Now, he resisted the stun, um, which is uh, terrifying for us, okay? So he's going to get some hits on us, unfortunately. And kill us. So that's why we saved the game. <laughs> so that's our first death, right? And we're going to load the quick save. So we need, to, we need that stun to hit, or we're basically dead. I am going to use my inhalant at this point. I don't want to, but I'm going to right-click on it and use it so we have reserves. Because we might need to finish this guy off with an attack. And we need to have psionic points to do that. So now that we've verified that there's an enemy up here, we need to make sure that we're in position. Alright, so I'm going to kind of just do this again. And I'm going to push F5 to save it. We know that there's a guy. So here he is. So now, let's go ahead and try to stun him again. Now, now we got him stunned, and so we can 
blast him. You see he has a giant sledgehammer, so he's going to wreck us unless we're ready, which we aren't. So uh, we want to blast him again. Um, actually, no, we can't blast him again, so I'm going to move way over here so that he will blast him next turn. We're going to wait. He's going to run over at us, and he needs assistance, and we can blast him. And we're going to try to blast him again, and we got him. Now, one thing you really want to be note word, noting in this game is that maybe not right now, but soon, um, we're going to end combat by pushing enter and go into stealth. Check this guy out. And he has a sledgehammer, which it sells okay. It's very heavy. Enemies very often have health hypos, and so if you don't kill them in one turn and they, they come out of stun, they will heal themselves, which is very annoying. So just be planned for, you know that kind of thing to happen and don't be surprised all right so he's dead how many more of these guys are there all right i'm just going to keep walking around i want to map this territory out as best i can and again i'm not going to leave the zone for this okay and here's another stalker and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to telekinetic punch this guy and he says stop it and we're like no, we can't. Now, we used up too many action points because we had to move. So, I'm going to have to just um, neural overload this dude. Okay. Do a little bit of damage to him. We're going to push. Uh, we're going to step backward. We're going to wait. And, oh, no. There was another one over there. Okay. Uh, there's two at once. Without grenades, this might be too hard for us. All right. I'm going to go ahead and blast this guy. And then... We're going to uh, use a health hypo and run around the corner. Okay. Yeah, this is catastrophically bad. Yeah, we might need grenades for this. Two of them at once is uh, a bit challenging. I could also try to come over the top and uh, take out the gunner first because he's the most problematic for us. I'm going to, again, uh, stun this guy and then run. Hmm. Yeah, I'm dead. That's a shame. Okay, so let's load the quick save. So this is kind of interesting because this is a situation where, um, you know, it may simply be too difficult for me to handle this with the equipment I have. When they give you quests... They aren't color-coded. They don't tell you what level you should be. They don't spell it out that simply for you. So what you want to find out is, all right, is this workable for my character? And I might need some uh, some grenades or some more AoE to handle this. I don't really have the psionic abilities to deal with multiple targets just yet. And so maybe it's a no-go for me. We're going to find out. So I'm going to save it coming around this corner. Okay. So here's this stalker, and what I'm going to do is just blast this guy with punch. All right, we got him stunned, and let's go ahead and hit him with... Oh, good, we got a crit. That's the kind of thing that might be the difference. Like, sometimes you have to reload a fight, and, you know, they get a crit on you, it's too much, or they don't get stunned, it's too much. And you, that's why the quick save is obviously your friend in these old school games. Uh, and there does come to a point, though, where you can't, like, rely on that. But that just is the way it is. So we're good. I'm going to go ahead and um, end, com or end the turn. Now, this guy, though, is, like, right up on me, unfortunately. And so I'm going to blast him. All right. So he can't catch me. And I'm going to run straight this way. And I don't... I think if I do this... Um, oh, yep. Yeah, it happened. Okay. So... We had a good turn. But I made a bad choice. Uh, and what that was is basically... This guy healed himself. I should have tried to finish him off. Uh, but what I, I did was attempt to slow this guy down instead. Um, so we're going to... Uh, let's see here... I'm going to hit this guy with this, and then we need to use a booster, and we do not have enough action points for anything else, so I need to run. 
Okay. All right. And I'm going to try... All right, I've got uh, my other punch off of cooldown, so we could be able to use this successfully. Ooh, I was really hoping to kill the guy right there. I need to heal, and I'm going to run around the corner. Good. Okay, we were able to get around the corner enough so that what happened there is that... Uh, the other fighter couldn't reach us and let's see here I'm gonna blast this guy and the nice thing is they'll only have one medicine did we kill the other guy right, this guy's almost dead we're just gonna run over this way he's gonna shoot us but no we did not kill him or maybe we did let me see alright this guy's dead no, we can't end. Yeah, there's another dude somewhere. So we're just going to walk backward. There's this guy. And he didn't heal himself. He was just hanging back. Now, we haven't regenerated enough psionics to use any of our abilities. And um, the booster is off of cooldown. But as wild as this might be, this guy doesn't have any medicine or he would have used it by now. I'm actually going to continue to kite this guy a little bit to see if I can naturally restore enough psionics so I can save my booster, and I did. Uh, and I'm going to push 4, and I'm going to finish this guy. And enter, and we did it. And I'm going to push 9 to go stealth. So this was hard, but what we did was kite. We kited them down, and we waited for Telepunch to go off a cooldown. We had to chew through a, a health hypo from the enemy. Uh, luckily, we baited it out pretty efficiently with a big crit. And we used this hallway and the line of sight to kind of stagger them enough so that we could um, make a break for it. And we played cautiously, reserving the amount of boosters um, that we used. But I did end up using a hypo, you know, and a booster and an inhalant, which I had to use. And that's just the way of it. I mean, you know, at the beginning of the game, it's a little bit slow for you to get off the ground sometimes as a... Um, psionicist, but we're doing just fine. I'm not going to take these work coveralls because they sell for nothing. I'm not going to take this crowbar because it's heavy and sells for just about nothing. Uh, let's see what this guy has. He has a dagger gun. Guns are usually pretty valuable. He has a bandage, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, if we would have killed the dude before he used his health hypo, we would have gotten it for ourselves. Unfortunately, he used it. So a bandage is beautiful. I'm going to save the game. All right, so I'm going to continue trying to scope out this area and just see if there's anything suspicious that I want to be aware of that will give me a clue as to, like, what happened, you know, with his camera. So I'm just going to kind of make a full circuit and I'm look at this camera mount again. And we found all those stalkers, but was that really the problem all right let me check over here now that i've looked in that area and let me just see quickly what is this there's a stalker in here too okay so let's punch this guy and then let's freeze him up and we'll just kind of step back it's very dark we could throw a flare all right, now this guy he used a second wind. Let's go ahead and shoot him. And uh, we'll need to boost. And wait. And he's still here. But luckily for us, he's now dead. End combat. Go into stealth. Check this thug's corpse. And we're going to find um, electroshock generator, dagger... Um, some rat hound leather armor uh, and a, b a bunch of good stuff I'm going to um, use my flare right here and just kind of throw it on the ground to light up this area and we're going to quick save the game and um, we're still investigating I'm going to stealth uh, when it's available now and just see what's in here there's a barrel uh, we found some 
items for making crafting bullets and the like and that's it you know there was just a guy in here i don't have perception there might be more but that's all we see immediately um interesting okay so nothing too conclusive over there now you have to choose like where do you want to investigate where else do you want to go all right so let's just go down here Okay, and there is, uh, all right. Now, there's an intercom and a door over here, but as you can see, nothing's going to happen when you interact with that. That might come into play later in the game, um, but it doesn't do anything for you right now. So we need to keep looking around and figure out, okay, what exactly is going on here? Like, where are these people coming from? So let's, um, let's see where these stairs go right here. I'm going to save the game. And I'm going to go right here. And remember, I don't want to explore too far away from this main zone. Okay. And there's a bunch of blood everywhere. Is this helpful to me? Is this showing me anything I want to see? You'll see that we've been here before. This actually goes back to this area that we're familiar with. And from here, you know, there's rat hounds, okay, but uh, I don't really want to fight them right now. Now, rat hounds are interesting in this game because they, unlike many other enemies, are uh, usually like almost infinitely respawning in certain places. So there's just going to be a ton of them. I'm going to stay on this level. Now, humanoids usually do not respawn. Um, okay, I can't get through the rocks uh, right now. I'm going to open this. And let's just look over here. I'm going to save it. And I'm still stealth. And lock picking 50. Okay, I can't get through that. And even if I had... Um, actually, I do have a lock pick, but I can't get through 50. Okay. Now, if you look at my psionics, um, I'm actually tapped out, so I might need to use another inhalant here, uh, depending. I'm just going to kind of keep scouting out the area. There's some bottles. These don't sell for enough for me to take them. And there's, like, uh, some graffiti over here. So this looks interesting. Like, is this something promising? Let's take a look. Lock picking 10. I actually can pick this lock, right? So we'll pick it. And let's just keep going around. I'm going to try to stay as close as I can to where we're at. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Graffiti, exploded toxic barrel. Do not walk into that green cloud. You will get wrecked. And barrel, some parts. Okay. Okay. Free drones, graffiti. All right, so I've circled back here uh, because I think that after we've killed all these stalkers and found the stalker in the side passage, that we're good to report back to Harland. It The quest log doesn't update to tell you that, but... Um, we found out some good information. Now, I did find out, though, online, um, that basically the quest will start the same for many people, but has a random sequence of events afterward, which can be different outcomes for, like, who is messing with the camera. So what that means is your um, experience may vary you might not find those stalkers like i found you might find something else that you have to deal with in those passages but that's the right place to go so once you've found enough people uh, and you feel like you have a sense for what happened report back now i'm going to report back because that guy i found in the cave had a bunch of camera parts like those broken components that that guy had were camera pieces or at least it looked like to me 
So that seems to be the person that broke the camera. I want to tell Harland about that. And I'll say about your camera problem. And I say, I found an entrance leading to a small cave just west of where your cameras were located. I found a man, but the cave itself is so dark, I couldn't really explore it as much as I liked. And I even used a flare, but there wasn't that much in there. This guy, do you think he took the camera? Certainly found a lot of electronic gubbins on him, and that's what we did find. Yes, yes, I knew it, and maybe there's more of them, and that's where they're gathering. That cave, I don't like it. You said you couldn't discover anything in there? No. And I got a bad feeling about this. Um, so anyway... He wants a different pair of eyes, uh, and he wants me to go talk to Harold and see if he's got an explorer for us, something that can be remote controlled and with cameras like a robot or a drone. I can't leave anything like that. It's dangerous. You go tell him, and I'll wait here. Um, all right, on the job. So remember, um, now it says here, Harlan wants you to go talk to Harold, okay? And I'm going to push M, and we're going to find out that um, Harold is actually... Do, 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 on engineering with Ezra because we left the map note and that's how you're going to proceed on this quest now again your bit of the quest may be different from mine because uh, it's it's a little bit random but we did it and what I really like about that was we got to showcase all of our psionic powers working and really how we're mostly leaning on cryokinesis and telepunch because they're fantastic uh, and we would love to but you notice how Telepunch goes on cooldown. That's why I love to have some grenades uh, to have a little bit extra oomph in there. But we don't just have those yet. So I'm going to go to Engineering. And I'm going to go um, sell some stuff to my buddy. And let's see what he'll buy that we have. All right. So he will buy, like, these electronic bits. Okay. I'm going to sell this. And... How much is he going to give us? He's going to give us 198, which is like a tremendous amount of money for those parts. And I love it. So that's a good bit of cash right there. And let's go talk to Harold. And let's just first barter. And he will buy this patching kit and the mechanical repair kit. Um, I'm going to sell him the black leather. I'm not really crafting or tailoring with this character. And I'm going to keep my repair kits because those are useful. But um, he'll give you 34 credits for the leather. And then let's talk to him. Um, Harlan needs a bot, and and he's like, okay, fine, 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 a mini bot. Um, perhaps I could use that guy, bop, bop, bop. I'm missing some cores. Um, it may take a while. Uh, when's it going to be ready? Can't tell. You do other things, and I'll start working on it. I'll mail you when done, and I'll have someone bring the Explorer up to Harlan. Um, okay, I'm off then. So you'll get, uh, basically, you just got to go do some other quests, and you'll get an email on your computer and your chamber is when he's done and then you can kind of proceed. So what we want to do um, is go ahead and start looking at the outposts and potentially gearing up. And we're going to get into that in the next episode. This is a good place to end. We finished um, one of the, the quests. We kind of started talking about purchasing, marking things on our map. We're halfway to level one. We're actually gathering up a good amount of money so that when we do explore, we can get some better equipment. We need to go sell all these weapons and things to get our weight down, make some more cash, and get this character stronger. Most of our money is going to be spent on uh, replenishing our inhalants. We have no Psy Boosters left, which are a must in battle. They're the only way in battle to get Psionics back other than waiting your for, uh, for your regeneration to tick up. And so we need those to complement our kit, and we'll look into that. Everyone... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're finding this useful and you're learning how to play and enjoy this game. Take care.